Hello everybody and welcome back to All The Mods 9. In the previous episode we created the portal to Alfheim and got started making the next tier of Botania items. Now before we get started I do want to thank you guys for your patience uh, due to the lack of videos recently. I was out of town over the weekend and when I came back I was just uh, not feeling too great. So I've just been recovering a little bit so yeah thank you guys for your patience once again. And yeah the video should continue on their regularly scheduled path now. And so yeah let's uh, let's jump back into the video. So what I want to do today is actually get started with mana infusion. If we take a look at our quest log here, in order to continue on to the next step, we're gonna need to craft the Gaia pylons, which are crafted with the Alf steel pylons, which require the nuggets, which require the ingots, which are crafted in the mana infuser. Now, I think that we talked about this last episode, but it has been a little while. So we need to craft the mana infuser. And in order to do this, we are going to need to craft uh, the different runes of, I guess, the uh, the different seasons. So we'll need the rune of spring, summer, um, Asgard, which is, I guess, not a season, uh, autumn, and winter. And each of these sort of recipes, each of the runes are going to take a few extra steps here. Uh, for example, we're going to need runes of fire and runes of water for the spring so today I kind of want to set up a little area in which we can automatically craft the various different runes. At least the basic ones for now. And uh, yeah, we can sort of get everything started from there. Um, I just want it to be a little bit easier to continue on with Botania. I know that we're going to need a few of these runes throughout um, sort of our journey in Botania. So I think getting started on automating that um, a little bit at least, is going to be super helpful for us. So the runes are all going to need their own runic altar. And let's see here, we're going to need one for water, fire, earth, air, not spring. I think those are the only four that we need to automate right now. I think mana, yeah, we can do mana as well. So we're going to need five of these runic altars. Not sure how many mana diamonds we have. Oh, we have plenty. Okay. Now, for now, I think I'm just going to try to automate one as we get a little leg spike there. Um, and somehow I put one inside. So I'm going to try to figure out how to automate one. And then we can just sort of clone it to different areas and sort of go in a line. By the way, I'm thinking I want this area to be here-ish. Um, it could go over on this side. I'm not really sure. I still need to decide where everything goes. Um, like I still need a place for the portal. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's worry about the runic altar for now. I'm going to craft a few modular routers and I'll craft a single sender module right now, as well as a polar module. And I'll configure this for now to just send items into the left. For now, we're not going to have anything sort of whitelisted. I just kind of want to see right now if we can actually send items onto the runic altar or if we're going to need to. Uh, it looks like we might need to do this a different way. I'm going to try a placer module, maybe. And that looks like it also does not work. And it seems like even a regular hopper doesn't work for this. Okay, so I think I figured out a potential solution for this. Uh, so instead of putting it directly inside of the inventory, what we can actually do is use the dropper module, similar to how we've actually automated the pedal apothecary. So I think a system using the dropper modules is probably going to be our best solution for this. So let me come up with something and then we'll come back. Okay, so I think I have a sort of system set up here. It kind of works for the most part. Um, it, like I say before, this mod really does not like to be automated. So we've sort of had to do some little uh, tricks here and there, uh, such as using the pulse repeater from the create mod, which basically adds a three second delay so that once the craft is ready and it has items inside, 
It takes three seconds, which seems about right. I might even be able to reduce it down to two seconds. Um, but yeah, so once the craft is ready, it'll pulse and then it'll activate this dispenser, which has a wand of the forest inside, which is actually able to uh, activate the runic altar. So let's give it a quick test. So eventually the system will be hooked up with our um, applied energistic system. Uh, so this chest right now is sort of temporary. This will be an interface in the future. Um, whoops. Oh, interesting. I didn't realize you could place down gunpowder. All right, so if we just go ahead and place all of the items inside, as well as a living rock, all of those items are pulled out of the chest and into the modular router and dropped onto here. And you can see it does begin to craft. It does require mana, which is going to be sort of a secondary thing that we need to um, actually get. Um, should complete here pretty soon. You'll notice that it does have a redstone signal and eventually it'll go through and just like that we have our runes nice and then eventually we'll add another modular router here with a vacuum hopper that will pick up the runes that are completed and maybe put them back into the chest which eventually will be hooked up to the storage system so initially i was actually gonna make a few of these sort of modules and sort of stack them over but i think the system should be able to handle any of the runes that we need to actually craft um yeah as long as we set up the recipe with applied energistics it should be good now one thing that we could do is make multiple that are able to accept different recipes that way we could craft different runes at the same time but i don't think that we're going to need a ton of runes simultaneously crafted i don't think mm, we'll have to see um, another thing is we might only be able to craft one at a time with this system uh, because as soon as it starts to do its craft uh, we throw it, it'll probably start pulling more items out so it might be uh, uh yeah i'm not too sure it might be a little bit difficult to have it working on multiple at a time so we're now back inside of where we're actually generating our mana. And uh, I don't remember if I actually talked about this. Maybe I did. Um, yeah, I think I did because I think I mentioned the cables sort of coming out to the sides. So what I want to do now is actually to steal some of our cables and head over. I think it's going to be to the south. That right yeah so we need to pull it out in this direction a bit and sort of figure out where we need to have it actually end up uh definitely not in the middle of the train tracks that's for sure so we need to come out let's say over here and we can probably pull it down here all right so now we should be able to just dig the tunnel over and now we can just lead the cables all the way back over there. And eventually we can pull it up here and we'll have probably an interface sitting right there. And then we can pull the items out of that. And actually we need a pattern provider, not an interface. I had to come over here and uh, look at my old system here to remember. So now with a barrel on top of that, it should put the items inside of here and then those will get sent or pulled I guess into this modular router and now back home we can go ahead and craft a new pattern with all of the items that we need for this craft we do need to include the living stone as well and because we're using the processing patterns we don't actually need to uh, set it up with anything but we do need to set the output just like that and that should craft a rune of fire. And if we put that pattern inside of the pattern provider, we should be able to craft runes of fire now. So let's go ahead and type in rune of fire. Middle click on that. Let's just craft one for now. We do have everything that we need. And let's just make sure that this works. Okay, all of the items are going inside. It looks like it's doing the craft. Living Rock is up there as well. Hopefully the timing on this is correct. 
I'm pretty sure it is because we did it sort of semi-manually earlier. Now that should wait a second. And it crafts it. Nice. So now what we need to do is set up a modular router below probably or to the side that just sends it back inside of the pattern provider. Now for the vacuum module, this is going to be a little bit more complicated uh, because we don't want it to actually pick up any of the items that are on side of the runic altar. But we and we also don't want it to pick up the living rock. So what we need to do is actually filter each of the different runes that we're going to use to craft um, these. So if we put the water, fire, earth, air, and probably mana. Here we go. That should only pick up the ones that we are looking for. Let's see if that'll actually pick it up. It is kind of weird and awkward that it's on the side there. So I'm wondering if we need it to pick up on the right side, maybe. That would work. Hmm. Oh, right. We're on uh, redstone mode. Uh, this is one that I was testing with. There we go. So that'll pick those up. Now we need a sender module. And we need a Mark II version. Uh, these will actually send at a distance. And we'll just make the pattern provider the target for that. Um, let's see here. Do we need to right click anything? Probably not. So that should begin sending back. And you can see that the auto crafting is complete for that. And we have at least one of these modules done. So now I want to test it with, let's say, five. This is probably going to break it. And in fact, we don't even have enough mana steel for this. Let's just craft some really quick. We should have enough to make a stack, right? Yep, there we go. Nice. All right, so back here, let's go ahead and put that inside the inventory. And we'll uh, request a rune of fire. Say, I think I said five. Get that started. And it should start pulling everything in. And that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, it starts pulling out just five of each of the items, which breaks the craft, unfortunately. So I don't think that there's going to be anything that we can do about that. We'll just have to make note that we'll only be able to craft one at a time. There's probably a way where we can sort of sort it out with the modular routers or something, but... Yeah, uh, for now, we're just going to have to craft one at a time. So my next task is going to be to just fill out the rest of the runes and um, add them to our auto crafting system. Which actually our AE system allows us to just fill it in like that. That's uh, pretty nice, actually. It's going to be a lot easier than uh, setting it up manually. Rune of air. Here we go. And what am I missing? The mana one, I believe. So now we can just go ahead and put these patterns inside of the pattern provider. And those should now all be hooked up to the system and ready to be crafted. And I did think of a way that might be able to allow us to craft multiple at a time. And that's actually just going to be to use a single modular router here. Now this will allow... Hmm, this might actually not work, actually. Uh, because all of the items are going to go into here. Let, let, let's just give it a test. Um, so I want to craft a rune, uh, let's say, of air. So technically need to craft two because it does craft two at a time. Uh, we're missing mana powder. Eventually I do want to set up these mana items uh, to be automatic. And I think even the mana steel and possibly the mana diamonds have... Um, auto crafting or sorry not auto crafting but uh mystical agriculture recipes that's what i was trying to say uh so we should be able to make those with seeds rather than mana so uh let's go ahead let's find a pool of mana i really need to find a i need to get a place that's sort of more solid for crafting everything and by the way, I do see that these are pinned up to the top, which means that they're still crafting. I think that something went wrong a little bit with that, so we'll have to go in and cancel the craft for that. Um, but for now, I'm going to... Actually, let's craft a Rune of Earth. Say two. 
Next, we do have everything for that. So that should go ahead and get started. Now, what happens if we try to craft another one? Yeah, that'll just automatically go inside there. It doesn't actually cra uh, cancel the current craft. It's definitely interesting. Let's see if it'll go. Okay. Definitely did. Oh, it actually did make the second one. Interesting. Hmm. But I do think it's going to break if we do it this way. So, yeah. Hmm, that won't work. <laughs> well, actually, no, it it actually is working. Wait. I guess using the mana uh, rune for this as an example is probably not the best because it does use a lot of uh, the same ingredient. And yeah, it definitely broke. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that, that won't work. It was worth a try, though. Okay, so I've spent a little bit more time sort of tweaking this. Um, I felt like it wasn't good enough how it was before, only being able to craft one at a time, or I guess two at a time technically. Uh, so what I've done is just gone through and added this sort of, uh, I guess it's sort of a toggle for this modular router here. So I have it set to redstone mode high, which means it only works with a high signal. So you can see right here, um, because there's no signal coming in, it's fully activated. And as soon as it gets items in here, it'll turn off. And once the uh, the craft is finished, it does actually produce, um, I believe it's power two, I wanna say. So it'll actually activate the pulse repeater over here, which I have set to 40 ticks, which is about two seconds. Um, that just gives it a little bit of extra buffer time between crafts. Um, it probably doesn't actually need this, but it's nice to kind of have it there. So we can see um, it is sort of taking its time filling up because we are out of mana, of course. Um, but we just have that coming in from over there, which should be fine considering it's all at the same speed. So it should be taking what it's getting back, hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> I hope that, I hope that the uh, portal stays open. But uh, yeah, so this system... I want to say is actually complete now. It's working as intended, at least for right now. Obviously, eventually we are going to need to automate a few extra things like the uh, the mana pearls, um, the mana powder ingots, um, fishing rods for the water uh, runes, things like carpet for the air runes, etc., etc. Like I said before, this mod does not like to be automated at all, so for a system that shouldn't be automated, I think I automated this uh, pretty okay, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so what I want to do now is to actually take a little bit of time and actually make this look nice. And I sort of want to spruce up this area as well as the area for the portal, and possibly even move it to a different location, haven't quite decided yet. But once I do, we'll go ahead and come back for a quick building montage.
so I've built out sort of this almost a world tree I guess you could almost call it it is a little bit smaller than uh, you might expect from a, a from a large tree but this is where we're gonna have our portal to Alfheim and as you can see inside of here it's just a small space uh, for the uh, for the portal the tree itself is uh, mostly done I would say there's still a few things here and there um, like you can see I haven't quite finished the back um, this took a lot more leaves than I was definitely expecting so I'm gonna have to in between episodes sort of farm out some more leaves for this and I also sort of want to finish off the branches so yeah I'll have to do that as well and I was also wanting to build a place for the auto rune crafter however I don't think I'm gonna have time for that today so I might work on that either in between episodes or at the beginning of the next one uh, we'll just have to see but I do think I'm going to end things there for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.